Peter's introduction tells you that I'm old. Uh, I also want to thank the Brennan Center and Michael and Laura and all the folks there who have obviously put in a hell of a lot of work to put this on and a number of whom just recently found out that putting on conferences when it was in their job description. Uh, I want to talk about two things. One is the cyclical nature of this issue and the second is uh, the presidential public financing system and some new approaches uh, to repairing the system. For those of you who have the supplemental materials uh, document, there's an op-ed in there that I did shortly after the election entitled the $200 campaign finance fix that kind of lays out one approach to trying to deal with the presidential system. Uh, this issue uh, is cyclical. Uh, there have been four periods at the national level in the last 40 years. Uh, when this has been in play, started with the birth of public financing in the period from 1966 to 1977. The checkoff was first enacted in 1966, suspended in 67, finally put into full effect in 74 when presidential public financing passed. Uh, congressional public financing passed the Senate, lost in the House by 41 votes. There was another effort made. Uh, at congressional public financing in 1977, and then the whole issue uh, went off the national agenda for 10 years. Starting in 1987, uh, the battle for congressional public financing resumed, and it lasted uh, uh, from 1987 to 1994. Public financing was on the floor of the Senate almost every year during that period. The House passed three bills one of which had partial public financing system in it, uh, and probably the only time the House has passed public financing. Uh, in 93 and 94, there, there was a, uh, a real chance at establishing public financing for congressional races. Uh, the Democrats passed a bill in the House. Uh, the, in the Senate, the Democrats passed a bill that had free TV time and low-cost TV time. Uh, they had a year to go to conference and pass it, and the House Democrats killed the bill. Uh, they did not go to conference. They killed the legislation. Um, and in 1995, when the Republicans took control, uh, the battle, this stage of the battle for con congressional public financing had ended. Uh, the Republican leadership was never going to schedule it. Uh, and. Uh, so, starting in 1995, the effort switched to banning soft money. That battle took place for seven years until it was enacted in 2002. In 1992, a soft money ban, almost the same as the 2002 ban was enacted, was sent to President Bush in legislation that he vetoed. And I would say about the soft money ban, without the soft money ban, uh, the philosophical and political arguments for public financing uh, have a very difficult, if not impossible, uh, task of surviving. Uh, all of the arguments about switching the system uh, to a public system, small donations, no large donations, disappear when candidates can, in effect, get the benefit of million dollar contributions through the parties, often soliciting that money and certainly often controlling the use of that money. So that ban was very important to the longer term fights for public financing. The current period we're in is the fourth period. Uh, it began with the Democrats taking control again in Congress in 2007, opening the door. Uh, it, uh, uh, we saw the uh, collapse of the presidential system uh, after it had been uh, very successful from 1976 to 2000. For 24 years, almost every candidate voluntarily used this system for their election. The only serious candidate who did not was George Bush in 2000 when he opted out of the primary. But Congress never chose to update or fix the system. It became totally outmoded. And by 2008, it collapsed. At the same time, uh, President Obama demonstrated an extraordinary breakthrough with 
uh, small donations and internet fundraising. And that's the period we're in right now. Uh, and I think that's, this phase is going to continue for a while. Uh, the small donor uh, internet combination does create the potential, and right now it's potential, for revolutionizing the way campaigns are financed, for moving both candidates raising money and, and small donors to uh, become the focus of campaign fundraising. Now, that's a, that's, uh, that was heavily demonstrated in Obama's case. It was the exception, not the rule in the presidential election. There could be a long way to go, or if there are some clever 18-year-olds floating around trying to figure out how to use the internet for democracy, we might get there a lot sooner than people think. Let me talk about uh, new approaches for the presidential system. There are a couple of keys to this, uh, and it builds off the legislation introduced by, uh, uh, by Senator Feingold, uh, Senator Obama, and Senator Collins in the last Congress, and the experiences of the, uh, of the 2008 election. And I, I would note um, that during the 2008 campaign, President Obama when he opted out of the public financing system for the general election, said, and I quote, that he was firmly committed to reforming the presidential public financing system as president so that it's viable in today's campaign climate. Uh, that's a quote Bob's familiar with. Uh, we've talked about it, but I am assuming that the president is going to meet that commitment. Uh, and if he does, we have an excellent chance of fixing the system in this Congress. Uh, we have to fix it in this Congress if it's going to be in effect for 2012. Now, the keys to moving this system, one are the four to one match for contributions up to $200, which means if I give 200, the candidate gets 1,000. That's based on the New York City system. It can, if people can figure out the internet, it can generate very large amounts of small contributions in, in non-influence money. Uh, it would minimize fundraising costs, and it would minimize the time of the candidate. Uh, it also is, an, uh, as we saw from President Obama, an extraordinary tool for engaging citizens in democracy, uh, for new citizens to participate in new ways in elections and in the democratic process. Uh, the second aspect of this that is different from past uh, bills uh, or the existing law is only the first $200, only an aggregate of $200 per donor given during the entire primary period would be matched. You would no longer be matching uh, portions of larger contributions. So the whole focus is on the $200 donor. And third, aggregate contributions of $200 per donor would be exempted from the spending limits for the primary and general election, and those spending limits are still necessary, uh, in our view, uh, in order to keep the system from becoming dominated by larger contributors and bundlers. Uh, I think we're in a new cycle, uh, I agree. Uh, with Nick that this is a time period in which we can fix the presidential system, uh, repair it uh, to demonstrate that it worked before and will work again, and create a similar new system for congressional races. Uh, I myself take great uh, heart from the suffragettes. Uh, they spent decades fighting for the right to vote. They never gave up and they won, uh, and we can do so too. Thank you very much.